Hey everyone, my name is Paul Baroch and I'm faculty at U Miami and um, among the different courses that I teach is one in uh, derivatives. And a big part of that, of course, is options. Should we actually think of derivatives and options as a separate asset class or should we just sort of view them as derivative securities that really um, mostly only relate to the underlying asset is an important question and sort of getting a sense of their uh, informativeness and how much attention we should be paying. To look at options specifically, uh, they're actually having a bit of a heyday right now in the markets. Um, volumes have gone up from about 25 million contracts per day to about 30 million as especially there's a big enthusiasm among retail investors um, in betting on directions of, of market moves. A lot of my research is actually about sort of trying to infer uh, what might happen about the underlying asset, which is to say, let's say, a stock on which an option is written, uh, from the prices uh, of these options. In a recent paper that I've published, we show that options that trade at short maturities predict uh, asset payoffs uh, sort of the way that you might expect, especially when you look at the skewness of the option. In other words, it's a third moment, it's sort of the asymmetry of the expected underlying payoff. It's expected to be uh, skewed positively. Indeed, the underlying asset performs uh, positively. But if you look at sort of long-term maturities, we actually find that uh, there, skew actually has a negative relation with realized asset payoffs. So in other words, if you have a long-term option um, and it exhibits positive uh, implied skew for the underlying asset, uh, we actually see that those assets uh, actually underperform. I think, in a way, derivatives really sort of shine in these times of high volatility, precisely because they actually let you trade um, volatility. You know, if you think prices are going to fluctuate, there may not be that much that you can do in a position in, let's say, equity. But you actually can, uh, you can take a view on volatility with options. And if you think volatility is going to be higher going forward, perhaps that would mean you would buy options. Um, and if you think volatility is going to be coming down, it might be a good move to, to sell them. And I think that options really have a lot to tell the investor about sort of what's happening, both in the broad market, as of course a lot of people are paying attention uh, now to the VIX, uh, which is sort of like the aggregate um, index of volatility uh, in the equity markets. But I think there's actually a lot to be learned at the individual stock level and also this sort of bifurcation in the markets that also shows up in the options data too because um, you see options on, on big tech companies that really don't show very much volatility at all and then ones on say retail or energy um, these of course are tremendously volatile and therefore in a way looking at even just VIX which is going to be sort of an aggregate combination of all of these firms and therefore of, of their volatilities um, may not tell you as much as looking at, let's say, the volatility of a particular industry um, and how that evolves over time as essentially people's expectations and um, attitudes toward risk in that particular industry change. I think really the thing that sort of kept me coming back to options because I've published quite a few papers on them now um, is the actual richness of the data. Um, so for example, I got my uh, thesis by writing a paper on the option of implied probability of mergers. And this was, of course, quite a few years ago. So at the time, people weren't as excited about options data as I think they are more and more becoming now. Um, but since then, I've also written work published at one of the top journals on the option of high probability of uh, healthcare regulation passage. And we've looked at sort of the effect of conference call textual analysis data on uh, option volatility for the firm that's actually holding the conference call, sort of 
shortly after uh, the call ends. And this idea about option applied payoffs for the underlying asset. Um, I mean, really, I think the reason that I believe that options are really their own asset class is simply because of how rich um, of a data set they actually are. In other words, there's really no way um, to really get a sense of these risk dimensions or the shape of future payoffs for the underlying asset or the probability of what might happen to the underlying asset just by looking at the underlying asset. Um, it's really with derivatives only that you get this much fuller um, understanding about investor expectations. And that I think is really cool. And I think that's sort of what makes options exciting, uh, both to do research on and to learn about, and therefore to teach students about.